Hello, good afternoon to all. Should I introduce Miss Giovanna Carnavali? <laughs> uh, thank you, Giovanna, for being here with us. I guess there is no need of a lot of uh, talking about Giovanna directing the Fundación Miss Banderoy since 2012 uh, with amazing projects uh, with important contribution in the city of Barcelona but also uh, international projects. Of course, first of all, the Miss Van der Rohe Award, which is like in a few months, uh, in a couple of, in five weeks. Okay, Giovanna is already counting down. Um, as well as projects, important projects in collaboration with uh, MoMA, uh, even educational and training projects with uh, Strelka, and you are more active than ever, and it's great to um, have a young person leading such an important institution in the city. I guess today she will explain a bit all the activities that uh, you are developing, but uh, we're really looking forward to see, to foresee maybe some of the winners, can we? <laughs> I guess not. Okay, uh, please help me welcome Giovanna. Giovanna, thank you very much for being here with us. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. Um, I'm very happy to be here and because uh, you invited us to present something that is really, I mean, the, the first time in the history of the foundation is going to be presented. Uh, the foundation is going to present a book and then is publish a book. But I'm saying this is, uh, could be cold and maybe somebody of the group is going to kill me, but uh, is, uh, could be uh, considered as the atlas of uh, the European contemporary architecture of the last two years. It is the atlas of uh, a guide of contemporary architecture 2015. There are 420 works that just arrived after the print today and uh, exactly coincide one month before the celebration of the winner prize, which we don't know, of course, who is going to be. We have five finalists and, uh, well, I mean, uh, I'm going to explain you the story. And actually when I, they invited us to present this book, I thought this is the better, the, no better other place to, to present this book because IAC is an institution that is betting for uh, research uh, and uh, education, but excellence. It's betting for the excellence in everything you do. And we try to do our best as well with uh, the prize of European architecture, the Miss Van der Rohe Award. And uh, I think it's a very joint, uh, good uh, collaboration in that sense for this presentation. But also, it's not only, I think, uh, uh, I mean, it's presenting these uh, catalog, but it's also, I think, I want to present a story. And in a story of my personal experience of uh, my work in, as a director, but although I would say that I must say that it is a, a professional experience of uh, a teamwork. Uh, I see some of the, I mean, I see all of you, but you are spread everywhere. And uh, this team has, uh, working, has been working with energy and passion uh, towards a good and a new vision and a change of scale of the foundation. I don't know if this sound is okay, but I hear like everything like, whoa. <laughs> but I'm here and I, I, as me, I'm here, I want to, to use this moment and to take this opportunity. And this is okay, yeah, the microphone? Your microphone. But I want to really to thank uh, uh, the group and the teamwork for uh, their effort and I want really to express my gratitude to all of you because what you're going to see here, it would never have been possible without your work. And really thank you honestly. It's, I think it's going to be okay with this. Um, first of all, I thought that the story of uh, the personal experience of uh, the foundation could be organized in such a way as a timeline in which we can see, for example, what happened before me, I should call as a past, and uh, the period that from uh, the 1st of September 2012 until today, I would say, let's organize in, into different periods of different epoch. The first one is, I would say, just landing in the foundation. 
Lending it really, I started two, two and a half years ago. And um, it was a great, sorry, but I... Yeah. Yeah, do you hear me? Yeah, I go, okay. That is better, it sounds more glamour than <laughs> this. Well, I mean, I am, um, do you hear me now well, purple? So I say that lending in a foundation really could not be literally different than this, because it was a very big challenge for the foundation and for myself as well. I arrived and then literally in the basement uh, of uh, the office in which we are, we are a fantastic uh, uh, modernist building in the Exemple close to La Pedrera. There is this. I mean, these are some of the models there because uh, some of the uh, some of the model was already moving for an exposition that the foundation has and then accrued all around these 25 years and then I realized that look look at this this is not a Photoshop this is really true and it's only half of the archive that we have and it's a sit in the fit in the picture it's archive composed by models by uh, real pictures by original sketches original plans each folder contain a project the value of this database is almost three millions of euro and then i found it out when i landed i saw all of this and then the the uh, foundation was, was we were almost about to celebrate the 2013 edition but i also found it out that this foundation was going to be 25 years old which is a very important moment and topic for for the uh, architectural uh, contemporary architecture history of europe I would say, I mean, yes, I would say already history because 25 years is a quarter of a century. And that was good because, I mean, landing there, I'm an architect, I had a very small office and then uh, I was dreaming to one day that one of my work would have been presented and, and selected for the Miss Van der Award. But, and then I had this, uh, this charge and I had this critical vision from abroad, from an external personnel that had the possibility to see what has been done before, what all the work that has been accumulated, but also what is still left to be done, and also which kind of value all of this has. But before continuing uh, on the history of this timeline, which I think it's very personal, but uh, maybe it helps also to understand, also for myself, that all everything we have done so far have a sense, have a sense towards the future that we are going to be, that the change of scale that we are today we want to announce firmly and that the foundation, whatever happens, must, uh, must to go, must go. I don't know how many of you are familiar about the Mies van der Rohe Foundation and the pavilion. Okay, let's start. I just make a brief, a very a small parenthesis, but I think it's important for all of you. I mean, you know, I mean, you know that in 1929, uh, Barcelona hosted the international exhibition in Montjuic, and Miss Van der Rohe was uh, uh, in charge to make a pavilion, to build a pavilion. He made it in one year, and uh, this pavilion was demolished one year later. This is a very nice picture and uh, that is a historical one, so the resolution is not very good, but what this, uh, exhibi what this, this uh, picture uh, shows, it's there is uh, one king, Alphonse XIII, king of Spain, and Ludwig Mies van der Rohe. There were many, uh, there are many gossips about uh, this picture, and many people that have uh, been discussing and, and thinking about what these kind of people do that say that in this moment. Well, there is a story, and then maybe I might repeat it, but maybe differently, that uh, about this picture. Because the king arrived, and you know, this pavilion was supposed to be the representation of Germany, the power of that state in that moment in 1929. So the king arrived, entered from the main door, well, there was not a main door, arrived to the main space, and yes, it's not exactly a main space. Please come on, enter. This is my group, I mean, by the way, of the foundation. Come on, get in. <laughs> they stay at the sides. <laughs> and then, the, so he arrived to the main front and, and, and to the main space, and then he was searching for a throne. There was not a throne. And then he, he kept 
went in, he keep going ahead, and uh, so he passed through a statue, statue that just was covered itself from the horror of the war, and then he passed through the garden and finally arrives here in this, yeah, in this space, and he found the architect. And he asked to the architect, sorry, dear architect, where is my throne? And the architect says, dear king, there is no throne. We are representing the Weimar Republic, and there is no throne. The throne is a chair, that chair that we have seen, which is the Barcelona chair. There is no stage, because we are representing a democracy, and you are sitting on top of the German flag. Well, I think this pavilion really represents, and I agree of many people say, that really the, it, it represents the shape, the uh, extreme, um, uh, reflection of uh, at the politician will in architecture. And now, now, coming back to our story, there is another picture. The same place, another inauguration, but this is 1986. There is no Miss Van der Rohe, but this is the granddaughter, which I think it represents, well, it looks like white to Miss Van der Rohe with a, with a, with a skirt. <laughs> well, there is not the king. There is a, that moment was Jordi Pujol, the president of Generalitat de Catalunya, and Pasquar Maragall, the mayor of Barcelona. So there is another, I mean, opening. The same place, but with another building. It's a replica. So you know that Miss Van der Rohe Pavilion does not longer exist. What you have, I don't know how many of you have been there in the Miss Van der Rohe Pavilion, just please shake your hands. Maybe it's not better not, but you have to go, yes. Two, three, four, five, six, okay. Yes, and my people, <laughs> maybe, maybe, yes. <laughs> no, you've never been there, of course. And I mean, you should go, really you should go, because uh, many foreigners also consider the pavilion as a mecca for architects. And uh, well, this replica amasses all the intellectual value that the formal building, the original was, the original one created after its demolition. How does it start in all of this? In 1984, the so-called young architect in that moment, Oriol Boigas, wrote, not a mail in that moment, but a letter to Ms. van der Rohe, and asking it the permission to build again the pavilion. And Ms. van der Rohe replied, and we have this fantastic letter in the archive, and Ms. van der Rohe applied, uh, replied and said that he was very happy to uh, have this pavilion rebuilt, and because of that, he would not have charged the commissions of uh, the following the works. Well, I mean, the, now in 1986, there was the opening because, as you know, uh, there was a regime in Spain until 1975, and it was not be able to build the pavilion before. But this pavilion, it represents the excellence of architecture, although it's the replica. And the concept of original, eh, like it, it happened in contemporary art uh, quite a lot, but the concept of original, especially in Europe, is very important. And despite of it, Europe accepted this, ex this as an excellence. And because of this excellence, from 1988, we started to organize a prize. And this prize, I mean, the foundation, the uh, work has been done since 1988, was incredible because every two years there was a prize and working like a hand, and you know, little, little, uh, and little, they got, they start gathering, 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 gathering information, gathering projects. And these projects have been collected, but at the same time, there was also, the, the also happening other events, other lectures, other uh, working, I mean, other workshop with the universities. And uh, they have been working also with trendsetting architects, European and also beyond Europe. But not, I would say, never really nothing made with strictly related with the uh, material that was being collected. I must stress, and I want to underline that is, I don't want to mean at all any criticism to the previous directors of the foundation. They have done what they have to do. And because there was not even the, the time span to understand uh, this, what I have here, what we have in front, and then just landed with this, 
we, we needed to make this. This is a very schematic timeline, but it helps you to understand that the architecture represented zeitgeist, the spirit of our epoch. Because you can see here, for example, in 19, I mean, uh, don't forget that the prize started in 1988, and exactly in these 25 years, which for Europe was, was also very critical, because in 1989 there was the fall of Berlin War, and we started, everything started, Uh, I mean, the, the constructing euro started in this the last 25 years. The European Structural Fund, Cohesion Fund, was uh, were started in, during the 90s to make to solve all the inequities, be, uh, inequities between cities. Uh, there was, don't forget that we had the first the World Wide Web in 1990, was not so long ago. Although I, I feel myself quite young, but I mean it's not so long ago. I think AutoCAD was in 1992. And the first uh, cheap air flight was in 1991, and the implementation of Schengen area was in 1995. That is amazing. That is amazing. I mean, if you see this, and then we had uh, the Euro, we had the, the, the organization of Europe, European Commission, and then there were other European countries, I mean, uh, Eastern European, Eastern countries that entered into Europe. And then in 2007, we had the so-called officially Uh, Europe entering a crisis from Iceland and so on so forth then other countries came came into it this architecture I mean architecture reflects this not only in the winner prizes but in in all this database we can see really the socio-economical development of Europe in the architectural context so this is also interesting to see I just passed very, very fast, but the, the total, the participation country from the beginning, you see also when they have been the country, the countries, and then when we came Europe, and then until, I mean, 2015, we have 36 countries that are participating. By the way, uh, Switzerland participated only once because uh, part, uh, it was part of this cultural program. That's all, and then although they are so very good architects, but yeah, they cannot be part of, of the prize. It's also interesting to see the development of the project by country and by year. At the beginning it was very little, and then you see the more we get close to 2000, then we double the entries. And then despite of the crisis, then in 2000, 15, we have these 420 entries which represent this book. I'm going to talk very shortly about that. But how does the prize work? This is makes what does the prize is unique? Why does it make it very unique? Is that first of all, architects they cannot present themselves, which is something very good. And it's not a prize that is given to an architect curricula or whatever is career so I don't want to make any kind of reference I mean just make it by yourself uh, is given to uh, architectural over realized no matter what the scale no matter what the program and that makes this prize unique unique because Ms. van der Rohe said that the quality is intrinsic in any building in any structure that you do no matter what, what is going to be. So you don't need to make a, a prize only for the public space or a prize only for whatever is it. It's for everything. And, well, I mean, this is what we have. We have a network of uh, uh, 1,700 architects. Eh? We reach it after 25 years. And we have a network of institutions and uh, a very long list of experts that are related with uh, magazines and uh, uh, architectural reviews, universities, that selects every two years for us, I mean for the foundation, the projects that they realized in the last two years. Which is very important, I think, because I mean the, we don't want to settle any, any limit of number. Whatever, I mean, if they are double, it's okay, then maybe this project have a two, three, four entries, but we don't want to limit the entries because we don't know. We want to, we want to try to have as much as possible with a wider vision of, to, of the highest, I mean, uh, good architecture that is produced in Europe. And this enables us to enhance and enrich our perception of the culture of this moment. And we think really it's, 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 it's important because We have a jury 
they change every two years. Normally it's composed by seven architects, and this year we make, an, we make a, well, we introduce a new entry. Seven, always seven, seven uh, jury members, but this year we wanted to introduce a client. I mean, if this is a, about uh, a realized work, the price, I mean, there is, there is not a good architecture if there is not a good client. And somebody who believe in us. And this year it's a private client. And I'll tell you the story because also it's very funny. It's a client that his main job is to make supermarkets. It's uh, from Austria. I mean, imagine the Mr. Mercadona one day will change his idea and instead of getting depressed every time you go to the supermarket buy something, he wants to make something nice in which you feel good also when you buy tomatoes. He made it. I mean, his first supermarket was commissioned uh, to Dominique Perrault. And he said, no, I want to feel good there. It's amazing. That is amazing. And that's why we want to have a client there. Because clients believe in architects. Good clients believe in architects. Otherwise, yeah, we cannot make anything. Everything is only being sketches. This year, these are uh, the, uh, well, I mean, here, the, we, the, you see the provisions from um, where the, the cities in which they are coming from this year, the uh, jury members. And very shortly, I don't have to tell you, we can't tell you when we are going to do this uh, fantastic jury trip. In four days, we are going to pass through all these uh, five, uh, five finalist places because we wanted the jury finally, when they, have the, when they arrive all the entries, 420, they make a first jury meeting. And this year, we made it in the ETSAB, which is the Polytechnica of Catalonia, the School of Architecture. And by the way, thank you very much to the Dean, Jordi Ross, to be here present with us. We have a very good collaboration together. And then uh, later on, I can explain you more. And uh, this is the first time that we made this uh, jury meeting in the university, in which we also represented with PANAS the 420 projects. We want also to the students see what is going on in Europe. They have to be sensible because you students, you guys, you're going to be the future architects in, in very, very soon. And you need to know what's going on. And um, well, this year, cha -chan, we are going also to change <laughs> the view because I mean we are going to the jury the jury members we are not going to decide the uh, prize the winner in the at the end of the of the journey but the day before the celebration and the ceremony and the, uh, in the pavilion which is on eight so it's one month from now here in the Kasha forum we will invite the five architects to explain their projects so it's an open conference, open to everybody. It will be like a sort of, uh, I don't know, like uh, you know when people are having, have in front of judges and they have to present as the best themselves. This is going to be on uh, on seven in Casha Forum. So they have maybe 20 minutes with a very limited num number of light, and they have to present as best they can their five projects. It would be also a very good moment for architecture in Europe in, and especially for Barcelona because we will probably also bring a debate there. And then by night, the jury will decide who is going to be the winner. And the day after, yes, we are going to say, and the winner is, for the first time with a black carpet, because black is our, not red, <laughs> but black is our, uh, well, I mean, uh, color. And, uh, and uh, yes, and um, I'm, I'm also guessing which kind of reaction uh, the uh, architects will have because the ego of the architects can be even worse of the ego of the of, of, of the actors. So let's see how they're going to respond. Is all the five will be there and waiting for the yes, opening the the leg, you know, opening uh, the yeah, you know, the envelope and see, and the winner is. Let's see, let's see. <laughs> so. This is, was the first epoch. I explained how the, 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 how the uh, price uh, works. And now we are going to, be, to pass through these, these epochs to this period. This period started in 7 of uh, June 2013. And I would say that this period for me, I would borrow a, a, a prosaic term that was like an inhalation of planets and stars in the sky. There was uh, the new president of European Commission, you know, like just one year ago it happened, the new commissioners, the new general directors, a new director in the foundation, a new curator of the prize, Ivan Blasi, which is now texting, by the way, and, and a new regenerated team. 
and uh, also um, I mean a fantastic energy that enter in the in, in, in the office and this also coincided with a very difficult moment for Europe and uh, it's undoubtedly essential to understand and visualize the evolution of the course of the last few decades we cannot only do the price anymore like in a very administrative way this is precisely what has prompted a period of analysis here we have to understand the period in which we are living he also said that the architecture is the will of epoch translated into space the foundation has to go beyond the organization of the prize has to go beyond architecture to a much more ambitious consideration as a valuable opportunity for a transversal vision of Europe through architecture we are surrounded and overwhelmed especially in the last decades well I mean in the last years of an incredible amount of data we have our computer all the time with us our our telephones with us we are connected to internet every moment we have an incredible amount of that and sometimes we are so much overhead that we don't know how to do and this is also I feel that is the ethical moment uh, the ethical duty of the foundation to try to organize and to put an order in all of this by categorize and 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 also organize a transversal reading of all these data at least in architecture we have to act as a catalyst of a current architectural knowledge and of course by doing that is normal i mean we have we are generating trends also we are aware of it but at least we try to be as much open as possible we started this grand celebration in 2015 I mean 2013 with these 25 years and this is a I think it's a very nice picture that represents for the first time the map of Europe but made and shaped the, with the models that, that uh, of the selected projects so maybe you see Spain that is very big Italy the country which I come from is very small compared to the rest and then and then paradoxically Iceland is very big compared despite of the number of population that is there but this is Europe made by the price and uh, was a very very nice uh, celebration we had uh, 350 people architects that come from everywhere just to be part of the first edition of breaking new ground that was uh, curated by Ivan Blasit which is now the curator of the prize and uh, you see here there are some of the names we organize uh, tables different tables and talking about uh, where does architecture stand today in Europe you can see some of the names and then we have thousands of pictures but I just want to show some of them that I, I think unfortunately that probably some of these picture will be uh, like uh, considered as archive probably in, in not so well I, I hope not very long from now and this is the result of what we have done we made a book constructing Europe and they will continue to make this tour like a music band but we were like an architectural tour through 12 countries and uh, you see the numbers of visitants and we found amazing that there was an extremely interest by from everywhere these these countries to understand what does European stand does European architectural stand so we said also with the with the group and with the team we said before doing anything new let's understand what is happening now but not only in Europe and understanding from Europe, but also outside Europe. We renewed the contact with the MoMA, because by the way, is the member of Board of Trustees since 1983. And we made, I mean, just read the names, but we made a, a panelist, we made a, 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 well, a symposium and understanding what does architecture, European architecture stands and under, is understood from abroad. Also with the, European architects they are working abroad like Miss van der Rooij said that since 1980 1938 was went abroad to live in the United States because of the war but so far since many decades and have been and will be always a big call from uh, abroad of European architects even in uh, education that in practicing and we have to understand why 
there must be a reason, there must be something that we have and maybe some other don't. What is it? I mean, is it that called so-called European identity? Is it so-called something that, I mean, why they want us in education? And I mean, CERT still manage, I mean, the, the Harvard is still based on, on what, uh, of, uh, on the organization program that CERT has made. And then we ended up one year later, but exactly the same day, which I don't think is so much casualty, and we were invited into, I mean, as a, as a, a collateral event in the Biennale of Venice. Biennale of Venice of last year was created by Rem Colas and was, uh, title was fundamental, was about 100 years of architecture. Of course, we could explain only a quarter of a center of European architecture. And we've been in such a nice place in a, palaz in a palazzo uh, in front of, uh, I mean, on Canal Grande. And although I'm Italian, I've been many times in Venice, also in Giancarlo De Carlo, in Ilaud, and so on, but I've never been in such a beautiful place. And we made for the first time, we exposed as a file format all the 2,500 projects. And yes, we categorized that. We had to do it, we had to order it, although we wanted to keep it open also the lecture. And uh, we categorized by mapping them and then we, we uh, divided into, into uses. And we finished, we ended up this uh, Breaking New Ground tour in uh, with uh, this uh, last uh, well, uh, lecture or meeting or symposium and talking about the European identity, if it does exist. I mean, I can talk uh, for half an hour about that, just uh, shortly, I mean, and even trying also to make it even short and that to say in five minutes maybe what does it exist, but yes, it exists. Exists especially when you go abroad. When you go abroad and when you bring uh, the Mies van der Rohe Prize Award about European architecture, they ask you, they ask you why, I mean, they ask you, yes, is this that European? Yes, is that a value? Is that, I mean, they know we are embodied and we are entitled to talk about this this European architecture, this identity. We are shaped, the, Europe is the most old continent with so small, that, but so compact and so dense in which we have cities, difference to each other in very small hundreds of kilometers. And you cannot find anywhere else this. And we are used to work with densities, with certification of, of uh, civilizations, with um, complexity in general about culture, about way of working, about languages, about uh, all this. And then it's intrinsic, it's inside of us. And sometimes we can think about that like something that blocks us to go ahead, to go further on. But I prefer to see that as an, a, well, a very important value. The more we go abroad, the more we are asked to be there. I mean, because uh, we've been invited in the Biennale of uh, Shenzhen. This was the first time that we said we wanted to use these, uh, the, the database that we have in order to, to see, I mean, to, to talk about urban border was the title of uh, the uh, Biennale. And then we selected from 192 projects, we selected 75 that were exactly referred to what the topic of Biennale was in that moment was uh, talking about the urban regeneration waterfronts and uh, we have to, we could have the experience, we could es explain the uh, success and uh, also the failures of this kind of projects. So we had this critical distance. But we were also, we have been nine times, I mean 12 times in nine months in, in, uh, in Moscow and Strelka, which is a very, I mean, I think it's another kind of institute, Strelka, that be, I mean, Strelka has a YAC as a reference, by the way, for uh, their activities. And they ask us to be the curator of a summer program. One day, I tell you a story, one day I was in a car with the chief architect of Moscow and we were passing and we saw a building in the center of Moscow and they said, hey, he asked me, do you think this building has a quality? And I was shocked because I said, well, it's not, it's not so immediate. I mean, you cannot ask in this way. I mean, I cannot say uh, if this building has a quality like it is. I mean, there are many factors, many features that you have to, con to consider to say if this has a quality or not. Moscow is, I don't know if how many of you or somebody of you has been there, but it's an incredible city with a very big potential. They have, or maybe had, a lot of money, and now it's a little bit difficult. And uh, with a, a, a will, uh, eager to do something with that city, to m to put the city in 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 this uh, uh, not European, but is in the in the world context, like many others. So they asked to us to explain how to create an identity, and they think 
that the way to create identity is to put a museum of contemporary art which we think, no, this is not the way. I mean, let's talk about urban routine. Let's talk about, let's talk about a public vision that a city must have. And let's talk about the urban routine like making dwellings, make offices. These can really create a good identities of the city. Let's make infrastructure. Let's not only think about museum of contemporary art because yes, because this is the way that characterizes your city. So we went there to explain Barcelona, London, Amsterdam, Berlin. Each one of them has a very, very strong identity, but at the same time, the development of the city has been completely different one to the other. And now, I mean, we are in a, let, uh, in a period where we are, we are living ourselves right now, and actually where we are almost living it, in which I would call like a retriving all the information from the database. And that's why here we are here to present this book. This is really get out, out of the print now. And uh, I think, and I said it is uh, the first time that Ms. Van der Rohe presents a book, but with this such of intention. It's the first time in the history of the prize that uh, we want to present uh, their all entries, because it's the only way for us to make everybody understandable, understand, to make everybody understand that this is what, hap what, is, going to, uh, what is going on in Europe. Normally, the previous edition was only referred to the 40, the last uh, 40 principales, like if, we say, if I can mention some, something uh, well used in Spain. But we wanted to, I mean, show everything, and uh, also we wanted to, get to, to leave also the five plus, plus one, which is the book of the last five, but it has uh, now, I mean, we are still working on it. And we wanted to print one month before. We wanted to publish one month before, because you have to start reading it, you have to start understanding why finally we have these five finalists. And once you have it, you arrive to the day of the ceremony, you will have a sticker at the, the end, and then you can put the sticker when the mayor of Barcelona will say, and the winner is. And you have been there, actually. <laughs> and the catalog. I mean, catalog, by definition, is a, an order of interrelated things. And uh, we have decided to create an order. And by doing an order, also we guide a way to, to also understanding, to reading what we are going to present. I mean, catalog, cat, I mean, uh, we have everything categorized in our life. If you go to a, again to the supermarket, you see all the products that are categorized by price or by product or, or by color. But also when you are somewhere else, I mean, also in a scientific catalog, also you have numbers. And then it's, it's about uh, not illustration, but about numbers or about, or about contents. So the importance of the catalog is not only it's content, but it's about the information. And which kind of information and how we wanted to create this information. It's a very, um, as uh, the team say, as a, has to be a comparable information. All the projects are presented in the same way. So the information is the same. It's divided by typology. We have the project, we have the images, we have the uh, plan or section at the same scale. Meter squares, we have the, uh, uh, well, I mean, the. Um, price of construction and the year of construction and so on. So are we want to make it understandable and comparable. Of course, for the shortlisted, we made more space. And the for final finalists, we have an even a, a very nice little booklet. But at the end, we want to also to add to this catalog also a series of maps. Because for example, this one for us, extra, oh, this one, sorry, sorry before, stretches what we worry we really want to defend in the foundation, that Europe is made by cities. Architects shape cities. We make master plan, we work with intermediate scale, we make buildings. Politics make countries, we make cities. No matter what, because it's not only related with the main big cities, but I mean, when you see these, these, these uh, black spot, back, back balls, let's say that, you also understand why there is such a density in some part of Europe and where not. So uh, understand helps you to read in maps, to understand it, it helps you also to read in what is not uh, immediately there, what is invisible with the data. And also we want to show 
The time and architecture. It's a very important topic. Again, we would like to stress this topic even more in the foundation because we have to be patient. When I was a student, they remem I remember they said, don't worry, Joe. Um, Colas and, and uh, uh, Nouvelle, they made the first building when they were 40 and they were very young. And then still when you hear that somebody is 60 years old and then still consider young, I mean, if you say the same and to an economist or somebody else outside from discipline, it's flabbergasted. They say, what are you saying? I mean, it's amazing. If you don't make your career, your own career, when you have 30 or 35, you're completely out. But in architecture, not. I mean, just only in the last, I mean, for the last entries in 2015, half 50% of these entries, the project started before nine, 2009. So you have to be very patient, guys, very patient. The Rijksmuseum, for example, lasted 10 years. So by the moment you conceive your project until the moment you finally put the last stone, it might pass 10 years. And then you have to see how much maybe your project has been changed change because it, the client also change because even if it's a public the, the client changes every four years probably or maybe every eight and then you have to be very lucky i mean look at this year there is one entry in 2015 this project started in 1988 imagine the patience that you have to keep in all your profession but also you want to stress the topic of the mobility it's very important. I mean, I remember I told that in, 19, in 1995 there was the, com the implementation of the Schengen area, so Europe became small because cities were much more connected with the cheap flight, if they works properly. And uh, uh, these are the mobility of the last five entries, eh, the last five families, by the way. So uh, they are uh, well working in. Uh, well, they are coming maybe from one city. They are decided to have an office somewhere else and their, their work also is somewhere else again. And this is the reality of ourselves so now, nowadays. We take uh, trade, well, I mean, we take planes like we were taking trains before. And we can live in different cities and, be in, and feel European. Actually, I mean, I'm an Erasmus, I mean, Erasmus program daughter, and then Ivan also is an Erasmus program son, and then also the, uh, well, I mean, uh, the Miss van der Rohe team is also has been living at, has, uh, well, I mean, you are also already are coming from Greece, and then you're working here in Barcelona, and uh, Silvia, you as well. I mean, the, the, the phenomenon of, of linking Europe is really existing, is, is our relation, our reality. But also we wanted to, again, to coming back to the maps, we wanted to also create these kind of comparisons. It is interesting because, I mean, you, you really see where the more, well, I mean, just we make a comparison now of the two, one, the residential blocks and the single house families. You can really also understand the policies that have been applied before, be, between and, be, be, well, I mean, before and beyond these projects, policies for housing where have been stretches or not and which and also we want to organize the archive or the database because it's com is a keeping constantly adding and progressing in this way we wanted to see the i mean yeah, the developing look at the mixed use how it's been developed and the cultural for example and uh, for example well i mean i'm a little bit concerned about funerary because uh, i mean <laughs> I, there is not so much good architecture, unfortunately, on it, although uh, Europe is shrinking and then we are aging. So, I mean, and that is something that it never pass. Uh, I mean, it's always uh, a topic, I mean, everywhere, especially in Europe. And we wanted to create a new database with a new web page, but also a database. We want to be the reference, like at Google, for research, architectural research. Everything you want to search in European uh, architecture of the last 25 years, please come to visit our site and you will see it from the database. It's a work that we started one year ago with the students. We made an agreement with the Polytechnica, with the ZAP, and then uh, there were uh, 15 students working day and night for four months and trying to make, uh, to digitalize all of this uh, work. And then actually, I mean, a big part of it is already done. We are still in progress because it's not easy. I mean, because in 1988, there was not even the CD. 
there was not even the floppy disks. And sometimes, I mean, the, the drawings are, are gone and lost, and then they are rotten. Or also, even the floppy disk doesn't work anymore. So you have to find a way also to read again what was there. But also within the research is also very important. We want to foster, we believe strongly that research is the way to make our architecture competitors, uh, competitive and also to respond to the needs of the society. We just signed, by the way, uh, with the director of uh, ETSAB, uh, Joan, um, Jordi Ross, um, and uh, with the Tongi University, an agreement for a postgraduate degree of two years that we start in September 2015, would be in English, and we'll be with exchange uh, uh, students. We will use as a base, starting point, the database. But we don't have never to forget the past, especially if we are in Europe. Never forget what you have, but use it to go ahead, to, to, to create your future. And talking about the future, what are the next steps? Well. We have many, I mean, invitation even beyond Europe, beyond beyond these uh, these uh, borders in Shanghai Biennale on the of business of design week of Hong Kong, but also we want to keep on entering universities. We are going to open to to celebrate an exposition of the 420, 420 projects in Dublin even before the prize, which is even amazing. Is really for us is is great because in Delft also as well there is a request from architects and from the from the University of Architecture to, to see what's going on. And that's why we are here to say, let's make a change of scale. The foundation, until now, was, yes, is still settled in Barcelona with a link every two years to Europe. But now we feel, after all of what I said, we feel the need to say, from Barcelona to Europe. And with Europe, together with Europe, in Europe and outside it. The foundation doesn't organize the prize anymore. I mean, not only that, but we want to transform it as a laboratory of transversal disciplines of ar from architecture. Transversal because we need, I mean, the, the, uh, in Latin, in Latinish, uh, the word project, project means proiectar, it means to throw ahead. So we as architects, we always to think ahead of what we are going to do. And we have always to think ahead because we have to foresee the needs. We have to see which kind of needs a society has. I make an example. Aging is a big, is a big factor. It's a big hot topic. According to the economist, by in 20 years, 11, we have an increase of 11% of the population that is aging. And another, another hot topic is dwellings. According to UN Habitat uh, study, by 2050, 80% of the world population will live in cities. So it's a big topic, not only in Europe, but everywhere. We have to work with it, we have to deal with it, we have to in public space. Public space also, even there is a big demand in Hong Kong about the public space. They have to make a completely new waterfront in front of Hong Kong itself, I mean, close to Shenzhen. And this is something that is going, I mean, it's, it's simply a hot topic. This is a need, this is a necessity. We have to understand that necessity, understanding what we have in our past, and go towards the future. But how? By also reading the digest of what Ms. van der Rohe said. We have to understand the spirit of our epoch and what's going on in order to be able to make an architecture that can respond. So from now on, and now we already started, to create this change of scale, in which I really, really honestly, I hope that most of you here can join us and uh, make this possible with European projects, with the European institution, but also from abroad, with other institutions, and also making research and talking about and making the future really better with a good architecture. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Giovanna, for your presentation. It's now your moment. In case you have, you have the opportunity to ask some question, you just raise your hand, and they bring you the microphone. Easy. Don't be shy. architect that had ever win the prize? Uh, 
yes, I forgot to say that from 2001 there is also the emerging architects, not only the normal uh, winner, but also the emerging architects. And then we leave to the jury members to decide with what does it mean emerging. And normally the jury members they decide that emerging is normally a young architect. I think that the last, the younger one, I don't know if it's Langarita Navarro of last year, so far. And then they were not, they are not 30. So really young, yes. They are 30, yeah. Uh, yeah, quite young. With a very specific and very peculiar project because, yeah, it's a Red Bull Academy, Music Academy, so it's also very specific. I think is there <laughs> yes. Sorry. Um, no, uh, this is something that I was thinking, um, and we have been talking about it as well. But I just want to put it on the table because um, I mean we are representing here the academy, and the academy is always the place of brainstorming. It's always the place of uh, thinking like the new ideas and and envision the future of architecture. Um, in the majority of the cases, uh, maybe we're an exception, but in the majority of the cases, Academy is not building real architecture, no real buildings. Sometimes we do pilot projects, but we do not build architecture. So uh, my question is mainly on how do you see uh, the connection of the Academy in the city of Barcelona, but also in the Europe uh, or in the world, as you're, as, um, as you're very well presenting as a kind of a goal for the Institute. So how do you see the connection with the schools of Barcelona, Europe, and the world, and the institution of, of, of Ms. Van der Rohe? Well, um, I mean, can we, can we interchange ideas? Is there a place where we can together start brainstorming, and not only brainstorm, but really have collective actions together? Yes, definitely. This is our main uh, objective by the way, because uh, you are an institution that you are uh, or creating ideas, you are developing ideas, you are developing research, the uh, University of Architecture is doing as well in different ways. And then for us, it's very, it's fundamental to understand what's going on in universities and uh, working together with you, with the students, make research, uh, try to develop together uh, joint programs and to publish that we are willing to, with the uh, at SAB, to publish the best thesis out of it and uh, to foster also architects and, uh, and students in, the, in their profession. We are also organizing, for example, now I'm little, going a little bit out of it, but we are also uh, organizing the uh, Young Talent Architectural Prize. We, uh, I, we hope, because we are still searching for funding, but we hope to give uh, a scholarship to the best uh, uh, project degree thesis realized in uh, the, the best of, uh, of uh, Euro three, the, the three best uh, of, uh, of Europe for uh, the course of 2016. So we are starting to gather information from uh, September 2015. And uh, this will be money given to these three students. So it's only the beginning. And if it works well, maybe we have more funds and then maybe we can make for, make for more students. Then this money goes to the students that become just architect. And then we give their letter of recommendation to all these uh, 1,700 architects we have. And then they can travel and check and stay with them, stay with the students, uh, with the studios, and themselves, not the architects, but the ex-students, they can decide where to go to work. And then it's supposed to be really a good uh, thesis degree means that uh, this person, this new architect, is willing to do something good. So he's going to talk at the same level with the architect, with the student which has to go, in which wants to go. So this money is, would help uh, to, to, I mean, in this uh, starting point of the professional career. But coming back to your question, yes, we are uh, more and more open to uh, establish this kind of collaboration between institution of education and we as an institution of, of uh, cultural, uh, that we are uh, yeah, gathering the, the cultural topics, uh, I mean, about what's going on in, in, in Europe and in architectural point. So I think it would be like a win-win, definitely. Yes, that's to be. Any one of you has another question? Or Any other yeah. question for Giovanna? Okay. I have one more. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Arete, we can keep on going. No, no, no. Um, <laughs> I was, well, it's, it's a comment and a question at the same, well, a comment and a question. I would go for the comment first because I think that it's important as you, um, and it's following your, um, uh, now your note about this new uh, uh, Young Award that I think it's quite interesting.
interesting because actually the, um, the uh, um, award, the Emergent Award, is not for young people, which is actually quite interesting, a concept that is quite interesting. Because nowadays, age, it's not a real matter in terms of in architecture. Even, and, and it's even more important to consider that than before. Uh, now a young architect is, uh, can be uh, 50 years old, as you were mentioning, so it's more interesting to consider it as an emerging architecture, somebody that produced something new I without taking care about their, his or her age, so, uh, which is also quite a peculiar award that it doesn't, at, at least as far as I know, it doesn't exist abroad. So no matter how old you are, it's just a matter of that you son suddenly emerge from what you did before. Um, so it's more common than a uh, question. And my question is about MoMA. How, when you, as uh, director of the foundation, organized uh, the event there, um, which was your feeling of uh, how uh, MoMA, the institution itself, see um, the foundation? And um, how do you uh, kind of situate uh, the foundation related in relation to them? Well, thank you for asking it. I mean, uh, quite uh, was uh, quite interesting the uh, re renewing this uh, contact with them because they are the uh, member of the board of trustees since 1993, 83, but they never do, they never did anything with the foundation before. And uh, when we went to them and say, hey, we propose to organize this symposium because we are celebrating 25 years of the prize. They were more than happy. And by the way, they never co-organize anything in MoMA. They always organize, they always have external curator or curator from MoMA, and they organize something else with somebody else. I mean, they never do something with somebody else, with another institution. This was the first time they did it. And we feel really <laughs> impressed because we said, well, I mean, this is a very high consideration. And we said, let's keep it open, this door because uh, they respected us very much. They respected the work has been done because it must say that uh, what we are going just to explain and the use of these 25 years because of the work previous done. And um, I think, um, I mean, we didn't, we are, we are still in contact with them because we have to go back to New York and then, uh, I mean, maybe by the 2016. But you can imagine the, the agenda of MoMA is quite pretty full and then they already have everything organized until 2017. So if you want to organize any kind of exposition there, which they are still very open to that, we have to wait long. And maybe we're going to maybe <laughs> organize the 50 anniversary probably by their time lives. <laughs> but anyway, it doesn't mean that we could do something else in PS1 that they are also managing. And uh, But it was, it was for us uh, quite, uh, well, I mean, thankful that uh, they co-organized together with us this event. We send all these uh, invitation co-signed by us and then we just printed it like we just put in the wall and say, okay, this is part of the history. Yes. Okay. Thank okay, you. Okay, so if you have further questions, just stay with us. We are going to have some music and some beer and some potatoes. And so now <laughs> is the moment to thank again nice. uh, Giovanna for coming.